my peeps what's going on i'm back on once again out here providing some some value out here to help y'all survive out here or help us survive out here in this land so we can live our best life all right um check this out i'll make this real short because i got another meeting that i need to be in at seven o'clock so i want to make this real short i'm not even going to let facebook do its thing this is also going to be another sharing opportunity for my business partners if you want to but uh let's get into it i'm not going to do any shout outs because i'm trying to make this go through this real fast but y'all just y'all just listen to your boy all right check this out Y'all know who I am, yours truly, Cedric Jenkins, founder and creator of Your Money Matters. Your Money Matters because of the fact you get up each and every day to earn it, doggone it, let's keep it, all right? Let's keep it. So allow me to come on here and give you some tips and strategy of how to keep more of your money, all right? So check this out. Um, I want to get on here and talk about this one little form, okay? Gotcha, Bethany. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, I want to get on here and talk about this one little form that's keeping you all from uh, keep that's keeping the IRS in your pocket. OK. All right. And that is the W-4 form. All right. 80 percent of Americans who are earning wages are overpaying their taxes or letting the government take too much out because of the fact they do not understand how this W-4 works, okay? Now, I'm not an expert. I ain't claim to be the expert. However, I will tell you, I've been learning and dealing with this, this particular form for about four to five years now, okay? And by me readdressing this form and learning how this form is prop is proper use, I've been able to keep eleven hundred dollars of my money a month. Uh, excuse me, uh, yeah, eleven hundred dollars a month. That's thirteen thousand two hundred dollars a year. I'm keeping that throughout the year, and then at the end of the year, old Uncle Sam writes me a check. And I'm a six-figure income earner. There is a strategy behind this. And if you're willing to, if people are willing to listen closely, then the clues, listen to the clues, and it will it, it will show you and tell you how you can do that. But listen, y'all, let me let me put this out here. If you're gonna, if you're gonna call, if you're gonna contact me and ask me for advice on something, particularly financial advice, and you are, and you already know the answer, don't call and waste God's time. Don't call me if you already know the answer. All right. Don't call me if you want me to give you the answer to justify what you're currently doing. I'm not here for that. I'm not here to give you no feel good stuff to, to give you justification of what you're doing is legal. I'm not here if you already know the answer, all right? And you just want me to confirm what you're doing. If you already know the answer, please don't call me for advice, all right? But I'm willing to give you advice if you're willing to learn. See, we learn with this. We seek with this but we don't learn with this. I can't give you or empower you with anything that I know if you're trying to learn with this. You learn with this, to change this, to do something different, y'all. I just had to get that out there, all right? So for those you know, who, who decide they wanna contact me and if you already know the answer, don't call me. Cause I need to be, I need to spend that time talking to people who don't know and are willing to listen. All right. Now I've got that out of the way. I want to talk about the W-4 because there's a huge misconception about how the W-4 is, should be used in its proper manner. All right. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to share the W-4. I'm going to quickly go over the W-4 so you can kind of understand 
what we're saying about the W-4. I always say, y'all, listen, you don't need to be bunny hopping with your W-4 in order for you to, to keep your money in your pocket. Let me say that again. Some of y'all are bunny hopping with your with your W-4 trying to trying to trick the government to keep your money to, or, or, uh, or, or what have you so you can keep your money throughout a certain part of the year. Y'all, you don't have to do that, all right? I'm going to show you a, I've been showing you, me and my business partners have been showing you a legally, ethically, and morally how to use that W-4 to put more money back into your pocket. But some of y'all are leaning to your own understanding. And, and because of that, you're failing. All right. And you're going to continue to fail. All right. Now let's get into it. Let me share the screen real quick. And we're going to talk about this W-4 thing. Hold on for a second here. Now I know what I'm what I'm about to say or what I have been saying. I know I'm about to lose some friends because I know that's going to rub some folks the wrong way because I'm I'm kind of like direct about it because I I don't have time. I can't play games with this stuff. There's there's millions of folks who need who need help, and I don't have time to waste. Y'all feel what I'm saying? All right. So if 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 what I'm saying makes some folks feel some type of way and say, say he's that up now to blah blah blah, go find that unfriend button. All right. Now, can everybody see that? Cool. All right, let's go. Let's look at the this is W4. You can go to irs.gov and put in or do a search on dub 2019 W4, and you will pull up and you will find this form. Okay. All right. Said does not make these forms. Said does not make these laws. Said just adhere to the laws to where I can leverage the laws to get me some tax savings. See, I know how to keep the IRS out of my pocket and still, still get me a refund at the end of the year. Now, if that's something that everyone here that's listening to this live or replay, if that's something that you want to do, Here's what I need you to do. I might as well get this on out of the way now. If any of my business partners share this video with you, contact them and let them uh, help you show you how you can get started. If you follow me personally and you've been connecting with me personally, you want to figure and you want to know how to do this, inbox me. All right. Now, W4. Now I've highlighted a few things and I wanted to, I wanted to touch on the highlights. All right. I want to start right here. The purpose of the W-4, it reads, complete the form W-4 so that your employer can withhold the correct federal income taxes from your pay. Consider completing a new W-4 form each year and when your personal or financial situation changes. Said, what is that all about? Okay. A personal or financial situation change. Let's let's talk about the personal change. Let's say that you're single, and the Lord blessed you with with a with a, a, a spouse. You don't went from being a single to married. That's a personal change. Okay, that's a personal change. If you an if you became an investor. That's a financial situation change. If you own real estate, if you own stock, if you own a business, that's a financial situation uh, situation to change. Okay, that's a financial situation change. So anytime anything in life happens in in in, in that respect, you need to consider or you need to revisit your W four so you can get claim the proper allowances on your W four. Why? Because the more allowances that you're able to claim, the less your employer will, will withhold from your paycheck. The less your employer withholds from your paycheck, the more money that you see in your paycheck. That's where at some point your net will meet your gross. But if you're not claiming or uh, uh, eligible or being are able to qualify for allowances, then 
you're you're not going to be able to keep most of your money okay this w4 form is supposed to help you do that all right so that is the purpose and if you want to know more about this form and um, any other thing regarding how to fill it out, all you have to do is go to IRS Publication 505 and it'll tell you line by line what's going on, all right? You ain't got to call said and ask said because I'm not trying to regurgitate everything in the tax laws, all right? Go read it for yourself. This is self-awareness. Everybody needs to know this for yourself, all right? Now, let's come over here. Let me clear up another misconception, all right? Head of household. This was on me. I used to claim head of household, but I was illegally claiming it. Let's read it, y'all. Generally, you may claim head of household filing status on your tax return only if you're unmarried and pay more than 50% of the cost of keeping up a home for yourself and a qualifying individual. CRS Publication 501 for more information about filing status. So there's two criteria for you to claim head of household, ladies and gentlemen, and that is one, you have to be unmarried. Two, you have to, pro you have to provide 50% of the care for your home and for yourself and for a qualifying individual. What is a qualifying individual? A dependent that's under the age of 17. So if you meet those two qualification, you, ma'am, sir can claim head of household you cannot claim head of house household if you married you can't claim head of household if you're single with no dependents all right it says right here this ain't what said said this is what the irs said all right now let's get into filling out this w-4 oh well, hold on i want to talk about this right here Deductions, adjustment, and additional income. All right, that's another section on this W-4. We may touch on this. It says, complete this worksheet to determine if you're able to reduce the tax withheld from your paycheck to, to account for your itemized deduction and other adjustment to income such as IRA contribution. If you do so, your refund at the end of the year will be smaller, but your paycheck will be larger. You're not required to complete this worksheet or reduce your withholdings if you do not wish to do so. So technically speaking, you as a taxpayer, you are the stewardess of your money. You are the stewardess for claiming these allowances. It is up to you what you should be doing. All right. However, Legally, ethically, and morally, you should be claiming what you should be, what you are, are, are required to, uh, or what you're entitled to. All right. Let's be good stewards about this. All right. Now, let's go out here and fill this W 4 out so you can get an understanding of how this is supposed to go down. We're going to use an example of a single person with no dependents because here's the thing I want y'all to understand is that. If you're a single with no dependents, the IRS is going to be digging into your paycheck every single time, every month, and then get you at the end of the year. Why? Because you have nothing to lower your tax liability. All you have is standard deductions and, and these few little allowances that you're about to see. And you'll, you'll understand that you don't have enough allowances to withhold from your paycheck. Therefore, the, you leaving the door open for the government to come get it. Let's, let's dig into it. Single person with no dependents, all right? So now, as a single person with no dependents, we're gonna go with line one. Line one, you're gonna claim yourself, all right? So I can't put anything here, all right? Because I'm, I'm not in edit mode, but check this out. One goes here for line A. You claim one for yourself. In a one, if you if you if you file a marriage filing jointly, so zero goes there. All right. In a one, if you if you will file head of household, 
in this case, you're not head of household because you, you don't qualify due to the fact that you don't have a dependent that you provide a 50% of the care of, all right? So nothing goes there on line C. Line D, enter one if you meet these three criterias, all right? You're single or unmarried, father separately and have only one job, all right? So in this scenario, this person does have a job and she's single or he or she is single. So a one will go here. So, so far you have one allowances on line one and another one allowance uh, one for uh, line D. So, so far you have two allowances. Line E, child tax credit. As a matter of fact, since this person doesn't have a child, we're, there's nothing goes on line E and there's nothing goes on line F. Okay, nothing on line E and nothing on line F because you don't have any children. This is a person that's single with no dependents. Other credits, if you have other credits, C worksheet 1-6, publication 505 and enter the amount on the worksheet, okay? Other credits is nothing more than you uh, claiming other deductions and they were listed there on Iris Publication 505. And I'm not, not going to go through all that, but you'll see what those other credits are. In this case, this person does not qualify for those other credits. When you see those other credits, you'll, you'll, you'll understand why. All right. Now, line H, add lines A through G and enter the total. Well, you only for a single, you only have two because you only claim yourself, and on line D, you, you got an allowance. So that's only two allowances that your employer is going to withheld from your paycheck. That's it. Now, two allowances is not enough for you to keep, or for the government to stay out your pocket. It's not enough, all right? You need more allowances. Well, you're not going to get it on this worksheet, which is called the personal allowance worksheet. Okay. You're not going to get it there because you see what it's asking for. These are standard tax credits. All right. And not everybody cl can claim or qualify for standard tax credits. All right. Where you get your tax savings is on this piece of form where it says deductions, adjustment, and additional income to worksheet. Why? Because people who own, have ownership in an asset and, they, and if they're itemizing, that's where you get tax savings at. And that's where you pick up an additional allowances, okay? That's where you pick up additional allowances. So let's go through this. I'm just gonna just go through this real quick all right, it says line one, enter an estimate of your 2019 itemized deductions. All right, see publication 505. All right, listen, for fictitious numbers, all right, you can go look at the list uh, as far as all those itemized deductions. All right, you see it right here, medical expenses, uh, charitable contribution, things of that nature. One of the things that you don't see here is someone who owns a business. Business deductions, business expenses, all right? Business expenses. Now, let's say we had business expenses because you're a business owner. That was, uh, and I, I wish I can fill that out. I wish I can fill that out, okay? So I'm gonna I'm a write it on a piece of paper here. Y'all follow along with me. All right, line one. Let's say that person had at least $35,000 in itemized deductions. Line one. Okay. Line two. This, is, this person is single. All right. So line two, this person claims $12,200 as his standard deduction. Everybody get a standard deduction. That's your filing status, all right? Now, you subtract 
on line three, you subtract line two from line one and you get your total. So that would be $23,200 on line three. Hope y'all follow along with me. Line four, enter an estimate of your 2019 adjustment to income, qualified bonus income deductions and additional standard deduction for age of blindness. All right. Basically, that simply means, hold on. All right, so basically that simply means if, so let me go back, line one, let's just say the $35,000 was itemized deductions that you got on your personal side. All right, line four, okay? Let's just say that line four represent the itemized deduction that you got from your business, all right? And we're gonna say $20,000 in itemized deductions from your business. All right, so line five, you add lines three and four and you get $43,000, right? We just playing with numbers. These are, somebody's gonna be real literal, literal and analytic with these numbers. These are fictitious numbers. I'm just showing you how this form works. I already feel it in my spirit. Line six, enter an estimate of your 2019 non-wage income. That means if you have if you have ownership in uh, uh, IRAs, um, municipal bonds, okay, anything like that where you're getting capital gains or dividends, if you're an investor, basically, if you're getting 1098 money, all right, you claim that. But some most people are not investors, all right. So line six is nothing. Line seven, you subtract line six from line five, that will give you that $43,000, all right? Line eight, now you have to divide the standard exemption amount, which is $4,200 from what's on line seven, all right? So say you're gonna do this math right here. So on line eight, that's going to be 10, all right, 10. Line nine, all right, enter the, enter the number from the personal allowances worksheet on line H, which was two. Line 10 is your grand total, which is 12, okay, which is 12. Now, 12 is far more better. 12 is your total allowances, okay? 12 is your total allowances. That's on line 10. If you didn't have anything, any ownership into, if you, if you wasn't itemizing and if you wasn't a business owner, you will not be able to fill out this section here on the W-4. You would have stopped right here at the personal allowances worksheet. And if you stop there and if you single, you only had two allowances. Whereas this person picked up an additional 10 allowances because of the fact they had ownership in something. They were able to, they were able to itemize and plus they were able to have ownership in a asset called a business. So you see what happens? Your pot of gold is on this worksheet. That's where your hidden treasures are, all right? But you have, to, you have to realign yourself within the system in order for you to get this. I hope y'all understand this. I hope y'all understand this. Let me stop sharing. Can y'all see me? I hope y'all can see me. That W-4, you have to understand how to use that W-4 to your advantage, but you have to reposition yourself within this tax system in order to do it, y'all. Stop bunny hopping with, y w, with your W-4. Stop going to Ray Ray now saying, I heard that you can do this on your W-4 
during this part of the year and then at the end of the year, stop that foolishness. Stop that foolishness. Now, if I'm stepping on your toes, just say, ouch, and learn. All right? Just say, ouch, and learn. That's what I have to do. But stop this foolishness. We don't have to bunny hop with our W-4. Da, 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 da. We ain't got to do that. We ain't got to do the cha-cha-cha with our W-4. Learn how to properly use the W-4 to your advantage so that you can put more money in your pocket. And how you do that? You keep the IRS out your pocket. You keep the IRS out your pocket. That's how you keep more of your money. But if you complain about you ain't you ain't seeing most of your money throughout the year and then complaining that you ain't getting a refund check at the end of the year, that means Uncle Sam is all in your cookies. Learn how to get him out your cookie jar so he won't be taking your cookies. I'm just trying to tell y'all, y'all need to stop with this bunny hop. Y'all been doing it doing it and doing it go for a quarter of, of of the year you 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 change your w4 to whatever allowances then you let that run so you can keep your money for a little bit then you say okay well i i in order to keep from getting audited let me let me change it back to wherever it needs to be then you do that then it's time for um the holidays they give you a holiday bonus oh hold on let me change it back so that way I can keep most of my holiday money because I, I need I need that for Christmas shopping and whatnot. Then here come the Christmas bonus. Up, oh, I need to change it again. I just read to you all, when do you need to change your W-4? I just read it. It's on the irs.gov website, y'all. Y'all don't have to listen to say it. I just showed it to you in black and white. But because of the fact our ignorance is going to kill our financial future. Don't let your ignorance kill your financial future. All right? Now, if this rubs some folks the wrong way, I'm sorry, but I'm trying to awake some folks because there's some huge misconception out here about how the IRS work. I don't care if you worked in whatever, whatever office, I don't care what you heard out in the streets. Them streets is what got you in the situation that you're in right now. That where you worked at and where, where they showed you as far as how you do the W-4 has got you where you are right now. Don't lean to your own understanding on this. Get with someone that understands it, like myself or any of my business partners that share this video with you OK, and if you want to keep most of your money throughout the year and still get a refund check at the end of the year, get back with the person that shared this video with you. And if I've connected with you personally, get back with me. Now, if you're too scared to ask me for info because I come like this, go. You can, you're more than welcome to go to somebody else. If you feel as I'm going to rub you the wrong way, but I'm a different person. If you come to me with humbleness, because I'm I'm the most humblest person there is, I got I got I got a patient of Job. But what 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 gets my goat is when you call me for advice, but you already know the answer. Don't call me wasting my time because I'm God is holding me accountable for the time that He gave me to use that time to build this kingdom. And when you 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 when you get to that time. When you, when you take up all that time, you hindering kingdom building. We ain't finna go there like that. You ain't finna hinder God's time like that. All right? So I hope y'all understand about how the W-4 is taking money out of your household, but how you can use that same form to put it back into your household. Capiche? I do this with love, y'all. I do this with love. This is not for no hate. This is not calling anybody out. But I want my people to be free. I want my people to be free. It's time to come out the wilderness. It's time. All them shrubberies, them sticky bushes that you've been running into trying to live your life, 
getting cut up left and right? Aren't you tired of bleeding financially? You should be, but you're bleeding so much, you, you can't even, you, it ain't enough Band-Aid for you. It's time to come out the wilderness, but you have to make a conscious decision to say, I want to be free. You just got to make that conscious decision. It's all right here. 90% of our storms reside right here. The other 10% is just physical. The other 10% is just physical. 90% of our problems, our storms is right here in our head. Mindset. All right. The mindset would kill bacteria, viruses, fungus, and all kinds of stuff. But if your mind is compromised, then those fungus, viruses, and bacteria will take over. So what y'all gonna do? Barbecue or meal do. All right, y'all. So that's my training on W4. Want to clear up that misconception. So Single folks, I'm here to tell you, if you're single with no dependents, just know Uncle Sam coming after your paycheck on tomorrow. So you need to figure out how you can get Uncle Sam out your pocket. All right. If you want, if you want Uncle Sam to get out your pocket, get back with the person that will probably maybe share this video with you so that you can keep most of your money. This is yours, Shuli Sedgwick Jenkins, founding and creator of Your Money Matters. Your money matters because of the fact you get up each and every day to earn it. You have the doggone right to keep it. How about you do that? All right. We'll holler at you. We we'll let y'all go and holler at y'all later. Peace.